Good evening, everyone. Thank you for being here this evening. Uh, Dr. Eccles is here with me this evening. Of course, Public Safety Director Jimmy Edwards is also here with me this evening. Uh, we learned about an hour ago, a little over an hour ago, that the city of St. Louis has its first positive case of COVID-19. Uh, Dr. Eccles is going to visit with you about as much information as we're able to reveal uh, to you about it. And with that, I'll turn it over to Dr. Eccles. All right, thank you, Mayor. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, today we're here to inform you about a uh, new development, um, which is um, we have the city of St. Louis um, has detected its first case of COVID-19. <clears throat> the individual um, returned to the United States uh, from a, a country um, with evident, that has evidence of ongoing transmission. Um, they flew to, into an airport in another state. Um, upon um, the landing, they uh, transported uh, or uh, drove down to the city of St. Louis um, however, in transit, um, they were in communication with um, the medical facility. The medical facility contacted the health department, and the health department um, specifically uh, instructed them to um, go directly to the medical facility to, uh, to receive care, evaluation, and treatment. Um, at the time, uh, the individuals did meet the criteria for testing um, that has been, been established by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Um, testing was um, conducted. Um, and the specimens were tested by the Missouri Department of Health and Senior Services. Um, and again, around 515 um, today, we received notice that the um, specimens were pos tested positive for um, COVID-19. It's really important to note that the individuals followed the instructions given by the uh, City of St. Louis Department of Health. And because of this, there are no additional exposures. And so um, no other individuals are at risk uh, from um, developing um, COVID-19 uh, from this individual, again, because they followed the instructions that were um, given to them by the City of St. Louis Department of Health. Um, at this time, we continue to urge everyone to be mindful of the preventive measures that we continue to emphasize day in and day out um, so they can minimize their risk for uh, uh, becoming infected with COVID-19. Uh, and those simple measures are, one, staying home if you're sick, um, covering your mouth uh, when you cough and sneeze, um, washing your hands regularly with soap and water. If soap and water is not available, um, use hand sanitizer that has at least 60% um, alcohol. Um, again, these measures have uh, proven to be effective um, year, in, year, year in and year out, particularly during the influenza season. And so we continue to make sure that individuals are aware of these simple measures that they can implement um, to prevent uh, the spread of COVID-19. Thank you. Um, some of you may have questions for Dr. Eccles, which we'll take in a minute, but I did want to say that tomorrow we are going to begin testing individuals as they come into the city to see what their temperature is. And I think some of you may have been uh, uh, tested tonight as you came in. Did some of you get tests? So we'll be doing that for everyone who enters City Hall beginning tomorrow with these thermometers that read the temp your temperature uh, based on uh, a distance from your forehead. The um, protocol is that anyone who has a temperature higher than 100.4 needs to go back home and not be in City Hall. That'll apply to both uh, employees and visitors to City Hall. So it's just the step that one of the steps that we're taking to make sure that um, we don't have any exposure that that we can avoid so and with that we'll we'll be happy to take questions can you um, provide any more information about the individual we've received information today that this person might have gone to work um and could have been exposed to other people and then can you also elaborate if, if this is a male and female the age and what part of the city they live in uh this individual did not go to work dr eccles um i i'm not sure have no idea what information you have, maybe that's another case entirely. But this particular case, the individual uh, tested positive and they went directly from uh, their car to get medical treatment to be tested and they have stayed home ever since that time. So. Can you explain the no exposure, how no one, how you know no one? Well, because we know that they have not been outside their house. 
since they got back home. And we've, you know, checked on them. We, we know that that's the case. I've been very, very responsible. So. What, is it a male or female, the age range? A uh, young person. Under In their 20s. Okay. Yeah. Are they live alone? Uh, they don't live alone. So they, they flew in from another country and then came and then drove here? Correct. From the airport. Chicago? Uh, we're not going to disclose where they but flew they, into. They flew in from another country, right. and then they drove here. Correct. And they realized that something wasn't right. Right. And they contacted. They contacted a medical professional on their way, okay. uh, and that medical professional contacted Dr. Eccles. Dr. Eccles put him in touch with a medical facility. They went directly there, and the test was taken at that time, and that was on Saturday morning, Saturday. So after they flew in and got in the car, they were sick then? They were not feeling well in the car. What country did this person come from? We're not going to disclose that. Okay. Uh, are they it's one of these called source countries, so one of the countries that has a considerable amount. Were they in Europe? Can you give us a region? <clears throat> no. We're, we're trying very hard to follow the HIPAA guidelines here. We know that some people are disclosing more information, but uh, we're trying really hard not to um, disclose information that would allow people to figure out who they are. Are the people that this person is with, you said there's other people in the house, are they quarantined? Everyone has been quarantined and everyone has been compliant with um, uh, the guidelines that have been established by the health department. And are they um, self-quarantined in their home or are they in the hospital? I missed that part. Home? Um, yeah. home. Um, right. Mayor, any thoughts on the restaurants in Illinois? They've shut them down, the restaurants and the bars. What, what do you think is so Illinois, as you probably know, has shut down all restaurants and bars. They have also also shut down all schools, which we just recommended that yesterday. Uh, Illinois has uh, some, I believe, 90 cases. 105. 105 cases. This information is changing very, very rapidly. 105 cases in Illinois. Uh, in Missouri today, at this minute, what we are saying is no, uh, no more than 50 people in a restaurant or a bar, and we encourage them, uh, if, if you and your family are sitting at this table, then the next table should be six feet away. So we're encouraging the spacing of that. That is uh, a decision that we will be reevaluating all the time. So we're trying to make joint decisions, as you probably know, yesterday. Uh, there was a fairly large meeting with um, the leaders of five counties, our health departments, the three major hospitals, BJC, SSM, Mercy, all of their medical um, directors, uh, some members of the business community, RCGA, et cetera, to try to come together to, to have a make a joint decision because we know that the city county border or even the county St. Charles border you know, we, we're, we're all in this together, and so we're trying to make these joint decisions. And we'll, we'll be talking in, again tomorrow about that decision. Is there any way to monitor? I don't know if you all thought about that, but are you all monitoring businesses to make sure that they're keeping a 50-person limit? And if they go beyond that, could these businesses face any fines or penalties? Our uh, intention is not to um, penalize businesses any more than they're already being penalized. So, no, we do not have our police going to restaurants. What we believe is that these restaurant owners, bar owners, business owners are all responsible folks. They don't want anything to spread in their restaurant either. And so while it's an incredibly difficult situation, both for the small business owners uh, and the big business owners, but also for the employees, uh, well, that's incredibly difficult. No, it, it's not our intention to use this as any kind of punitive thing. This is really about science. It's about epidemiology and how to stop the spread of COVID-19. Any other questions, guys? Yes. Right now, you mentioned that the person's quarantined. What happens at this point now as far as testing? Um, this person that tests was done at the state lab, where does testing stand today? Because we know that's been a big issue. 
We need more test kits. We need more lab capacity. The state is working on that. I spoke with the governor last night. They expect more tests. Private sector, hospitals, private labs, state, everybody's bringing up their lab capacity. There will still be criteria for being tested because you, you don't want to overrun that system. So that criteria is being developed and has been developed by the three hospitals uh, for the private testing. So all of this, you, you know how rapidly this has changed over the last uh, week or two. If you had asked me a week ago tonight if we would be having this conversation today and have these, these measures in place, I would have thought, oh, goodness, no. But here we are today, very rapidly changing situation. Um, and so we'll revisit that decision. All right, thanks, Thank you all for Appreciate coming on it. short notice. Thank you.